so a few things i want to go over right and these are things that i want to see in the future for d4 right um so i wrote like a little list we're gonna go through the list and then you guys can add to the list and we'll talk about them right so we already know that some of these are coming but i'm gonna go from top to bottom on the list right obviously the gem stash um gems in general having their own tab things like that they're coming anyway i think but they're in like season two but i would like to see changes on that obviously this is just like going to be accumulation of different changes that i want right or that i'd like to see now going into the other things we've got the nightmare dungeons of course we're going to get uh, more experience from them and the teleport to them which is pretty good as well i like that there is a couple of things that i'd like to see from nightmare dungeons uh, not changes but just additionals i guess right add like adding stuff into them right one of those would be like more of the special events you know like helltide has its special events and stuff like that the events that we see in nightmare dungeons in general are, are pretty much the same as what we see in regular dungeons so i'd like to see a little bit more difference in those um and just different extra things like uh the modifiers on there as well like they don't only have to be like one positive the rest negative they could have like a, a mul multiple of like positives and then like fewer negatives on like a different role or something like that Ca I know we do go back a lot to POE map systems and stuff like that, but you can have a look into those and you can still have two positives. That's not going to be a bad thing. You know what I mean? Or whatever. And then add in different things in like um, greed shrines. I think greed shrines need to be better in general because I just don't think they're good anyway. They're like either give loads and loads of money or like when you use them, you know, kind of similar to, is it the free ones where you could use them and loads of goblins would spawn? That's fine as well. Anything like that. Greed is just a bit shit at the minute, but I'd like something better than the greed ones that we currently got. Yeah, we're going to get like better experience from the Nightmare Dungeons like when these... I don't know if it's this patch that's going live soon that's going to change that, but either way, that would be pretty good. The other thing that I really hate, and this is an Ignorance is Bliss thing, right? Because anyone that hasn't noticed this already is going to start noticing and not liking it as well. There's two of these actually that I'll bring up in this point, right? So dungeons, you know when you're running through the dungeons and you've got the little gap so it's like you slay all the enemies in this area then you run into this little room and it's normally got like levers in there you've got to push the levers or like a construct that you've got to kill or say 15 elites or rares or whatever just spawn and you've got to kill them those rooms are literally just a time sink and they don't give you anything they don't give you loot they don't give you experience that's one of the biggest gripes for me Honestly, it's horrific because the more I do them, the more you realize, especially in the later tiers and stuff like that, in the higher levels, all of them rares and elites, if that counts your experience, you get loads of experience and it would make it a bit of a nicer experience overall, right? But you don't get it. That's one of the parts I don't like. Like the one that's like, when you realize you're like, actually, I'm getting pissed on. And there's another one. The other one, this isn't as bad as that as that one, but it's legendaries. When they drop legendaries or uniques, you see them on the floor on the minimap before you actually see them drop. It's a small little gripe, but I'd like that to be changed because I don't I don't particularly like that. I think that's a little bit of a it's just annoying for me because I because I'm looking at the minimap anyway, and then I see them drop and I'm like, oh, they're already there before they've dropped on the floor, and it just rips you of that like sort of a uh, moment. You know what I mean? The, another th another thing that I think it does need, right? So I'm only at le uh, level 81. I've got two characters more or less to 80. But once you get to world tier 4 and you start collecting the ancestrals, after you've hit that last sort of ancestral tier, it's the, the sort of power of your build doesn't change as much as it does from, say, world tier 3 to 4, and then when you get into 4. Then once you've got your ancestral tiers, even if they're not best in slot, and you're slowly getting your best in slot it's very very like negligible how much difference it makes so i think there needs to be another break point i do personally i think that would be pretty cool like it like let's say i think it right in the moment i think it's 820 is like the max that we can drop so why not that be like another break point or maybe it is when we get a new world tier because that's another one that i'd like to see i think another world tier would probably circumvent it a little bit from like 85 probably 80 to 85 another world tier comes in there that would be pretty nice i think that would be pretty good that's what i'd like to see as well something like that this is going to be more quality of life-ish stuff now so stash tabs in general obviously we need loads more of them i think i think that's like a given though isn't it for everybody um bags like uh, in your bag you could have like more tabs in your bag for example you've got one for consumables but that takes whispering keys it takes your potions i think incense as well if you have incense and it'll also take your um your sigils nightmare sigils it would be nice just to have an additional nightmare sigil one and just keep loads in there but one that you could scroll down that was just whatever i i don't like how nightmare sigils are in a minute because 
if you collect loads granted you do normally switch up quite a bit now so i'm having to get rid of a lot to then just run like let's say level 30 ones that like so they're not the monsters aren't too high of a level so it's like not counterproductive for my build and stuff but i'd like to see a little bit of that a refund all on paragon tree i'd like to see a refund all on that or in fact a refund board would be better so then you can set you know like separate the boards because you might have one board that just wasn't good enough but the rest is all right so you want to just refund that board take the board out all the paragon points go back and then you're good you're good to go i'd like to see that the skill tree in general uh the paragon tree and your bags and your stash should have a search bar as well that is a, a huge thing like we've already got like on the skill tab for example on the skill thing we've got the little um search for keywords but i don't think that's enough i think we need a search bar it, 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 it's not it isn't enough i'd rather a search bar for everything it just makes more sense to me that does um going in the future what i'd like to see though is small little things to help end game it's more of a quality of life thing this though it is a loot filter but it's not like an in-depth loot, loot filter or anything like that it's something that we could just do similar to um just make your own sort of thing kind of like uh not path of exiles because that's quite heavy last epoch yeah last epoch so similar to that you can make your own in in those games but in this one just a small one for example when you're looking for your best in slot gear and you're only searching for an in particular type then it would be good because you, you can already there is, there is maps and stuff that you can go for for specific gear well more 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 specific so it, it drops more so from like say bandits let's say for example whatever it would be good if you could have a sort of like a loot filter that only shows gloves let's say you were looking for gloves only shows gloves if that's what you want to do it should just be an option to have if you want to have it it's not too deep it doesn't have to be too deep either now one of the big things that i do want to look at that, that i wanted for this game as well and i still think i want this um is more crafting options so right now we can re we can recraft or enchant one mod on an item now if you look back to 003 you remember sockets were a modifier so if you got is it ramaldini's gift i think it was called something like that it was the, it was the QB thing or whatever it was and what it would do is it add a socket into your weapon but it would just add a socket in meaning that you can put another modifier on it so you could re-roll get a modifier and have the socket on it as well if they brought something similar to that in d4 i think this could be really good for itemization in general and a kind of bit of gambling now in the arpgs in general a lot of people like to gamble for something if you're valorb you exalt or you, well is it exalt anymore you slam an item in poe right and it's quite fun if you hit the right one it's sick if you hit the wrong one it's dead but it doesn't matter that's a bit of the gamble right I think in this they should do something like that let's say it's a ramaldini's gift or whatever it was called again and you slam it into an item and it'll add a modifier to that item solid just an add one so you've got four at a minute you get a fifth and you've got no control over that the only way that you could re-roll if you wanted to if they wanted to add this in is use another one on it and it would only re-roll the ramaldini's gift uh rolled mod and maybe it comes up in its own little thing at the bottom so you know the difference between all the other mods the enchanted mod and then the ramaldini one with just a little symbol next to it and that's the mod that you got on it it'll add that extra tier maybe maybe something like that could even circumvent having another world tier so early because then you've got an extra bit that you can add onto your all your gear if you found these out and then they weren't like extremely rare like the uniques right now the uniques right now that are like the extremely rare ones they're almost impossible to get they're not so much a chase item they're more of just a unicorn item in it so i wouldn't want them to be as rare as that but at least be able to use them something like that would be pretty good as well and also going back to something someone said it in chat but like resistances and stuff need a rework which which is definitely fair because i you want i want to see that being worked as well and i think there's big patches coming right so they've had two days of maintenance uh well not two days but like i think five hours on two separate days that we've been able to play the game but there has been maintenance so hopefully we do see some changes these are just things that i'd like to see in the future to be honest or like from the changes obviously there's gonna be a lot of balance changes with the classes and stuff like that there's gonna be all sorts of happening so and apparently it's a 13 page one so i want to see what the 13 pages say that's what i want to read through that's what i want to read through later that day patch notes are here so we're gonna read over the patch notes together i will zoom it in so you guys can see it a bit better as well but here we go so 1.03 uh, 1.03 uh all platforms june 27th so for the first bit of the notes bug fixes dungeons events and other activities okay fix an issue where players couldn't engage with a dead man's dredge dungeon boss nice fix an issue with a certain whisper uh, certain whispers couldn't be completed okay issue where the one who cut 
those who call the storm event wouldn't re register as completed. All right. Fix an issue f where those who start those who call the storm. I can't fucking say it. Event would be uh, place a permanent debuff on the player and gradually drain the health. Fix an issue where enemies could spawn behind the sealed door of the cultist refuge and block in dungeon progression. Nice. Fix an issue where characters could be damaged and killed during the stronghold completion cutscene. Not the valiant triumph we planned. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Fixed an issue where the level 100 pinnacle boss would appear again with no health bar if killed during a specific phase. Okay. Not been able to kill that yet, but it's nice. Fixed an issue where the progression could be blocked in the Cathedral of Light capstone dungeon in Kovishan. Okay. Fixed an issue that resulted in a crash or a freeze for players uh, entered the Untamed Thicket dungeon where during the Fangs of Corruption quest. Okay. So there's a load of dungeon and events activities uh, and other activities that have been fixed there. I've not seen any of them that I can recall, so that's okay. These are the ones as well. There's, there's loads of pages, apparently, so we're going to go through them all. Gameplay fixes. Fixed an issue where the insta insatiable fury and Mad Wolf's Glee items prevented druids from transmogs into... Sorry, transforming into werebear or were werewolf forms. Okay. Fixed an issue where the spider host enemies would remain upright after exploding and dying. Actually, that's quite a good one. That's quite a good one. Fixed an issue where equipment... Uh, with socketed gems wouldn't be mass salvaged. Okay. Fixed an issue where players were unable to teleport to Keragar while in Keragar or Keragar outskirts and subregions. Okay. Fixed an issue where the players on table... Yeah, we've already done that one. Fixed an issue where corpse tendrils would cause the corpse visual to disappear. Fixed an issue where the camera would not zoom in and join in the world boss encounter. Okay. Fixed an issue where barbarian players would get stuck between bone walls after using charge. Okay. Fixed an issue where the rogue players would remain invisible to other players after using the concealment skill in the fields of hatred. Okay. Fixed an issue where Aradaya's tornadoes, if I've said that right, would cause the player to be stuck in knockback state if hit by multiple tornadoes. Okay. Fixed an issue where pressing any button on the controller while days would halt all input. Okay, that's fair enough. That's pretty brutal, isn't it? Uh, Fixed an issue where caches and world tier conditions could be brought into higher world, world tiers and provide uh, rewards in that world to you. Fixed an issue where the skeleton warrior upgraded for increasing for burning instinct power for the paragon board did not account for base critical damage on its hit. Hold on. Fix an issue where the burning instinct power on the sorceress paragon board did not account for the base critical damage in its calculation. Okay. Nice. Fix an issue where the player could move in game during the leave game countdown. All right, then. And we're on to the local co-op. Local co-op, uh, fix an issue with a second player that closes the region progress menu would be locked in the world map during local co-op play. Fix an issue where some some quests would not properly progress for all players in local co-op. Fix an issue where the preview slot for the item upgrades would be display on the player one during local co-op play. Nice. Fix an issue where buttons in the store would become uninteractable for a player for player two during local co-op. All right, okay. Got to make sure that the store works. Fixed an issue where the target in the, uh, the same enemy would show different health bars for each player during local co-op. Fixed an issue where the spirit boons menu couldn't be displayed for player two if the player one had it open during co-op. Fixed an issue where the remaining player would not be able to move their mount if the other player exited the game in local co-op. Okay. Quests that have been fixed. Jesus. All right. Okay. Fixed an issue with the NPC uh, Lack Lackthan. Is it Lackthan? Uh, could duplicate during multiple uh, multiple quests. Fix an issue where progress of the malign devotion quest. Don't know if I'm saying most of these right. Could become blocked. If the player left the cellar as Lacrin started to stand up. Fix an issue. Is that the one? Is that the one that we got stuck? I think that's the one that we actually got stuck on. It is. That's the that's the weird one that Yeah, yeah, I think we actually yeah, yeah. I remember that being fucked. Uh, fix an issue where players would have the progression in the Apex of Misery quest blocked if they teleported away during the during the destroy the risen remains objective fix an issue where the player character would get blocked if they sat on a chair to talk to an npc honestly remove the chairs <laughs> I, I hate the chairs so much <laughs> fix an issue where brawl and mother's chosen would move oddly during the evade eavesdropping cutscene if the player was near the broken wall all right players may now re-enter the boss area after the follower has joined them during the storming of the gates quest Fix an issue where the Illusion Wood statue could become uninteractable during the Wayward Quest. Fixed an issue where the true potential rogue class quests seem sometimes couldn't properly be completed. Okay. 
UI. Fix an issue where chat would be expanded when the chat is not visible. I like that because I did get a few of those every now and then as well. And I was I was a bit scared during hardcore because that would happen quite a bit. Like, or just the chat gets in the way or I press something. Like, if I've accidentally hit enter or something, it, it'll bug up a little bit. Fix an issue where a party member's HP bar would be would appear to be zero if they left the vicinity. That is actually big because the amount of times that would make me think someone's died, that's actually quite big. Fix an issue where the GPU not supported message was uh, would display broken text. Fix an issue where the particles of the Druid Spirit Boons would persist after closing the associated menu. Fix an issue for on Xbox consoles where the cross-network play notification would display in-game even if cross-network was disabled. All right. Fix an issue if that... <clears throat> pardon me. Fix an issue that displayed an empty notification to new players when the world boss appeared. Okay. Fix an issue where the potion upgrade icon would be missing when the player... With, oh, when playing with a controller. Okay. Fix an issue with the town portal progress bar would be visible while in menus. Fix an issue on a PC with the tab key would not open the map if the materials panel was open. Didn't even know that was a thing. Okay. Fix an issue where the spur ability for mounts would display as not yet learned. Okay. Fix an issue where the linked item menu could persist on screen when switching between keyboard and mouse and... Oh, okay, okay. A mouse and keyboard and controller. Fix an issue where players would receive improper message when undergoing deletion of hardcore character. Fix an issue where the the interact wheel prompt would appear over vases near the Fates Retreat waypoint. Some of these I haven't fully seen, but these are just issues that have come up, obviously, so that's all right. Fix an issue where the socket button socket button would uh, persist if the player swapped tabs. Fix multiple instances where the pins on the map from either a quest or the player would not function properly. Oh, is that going to be like the GPS? So if you put one down in like, for example, by the Tree of Whispers, I think if you put it on the bottom left part of that, it would take you all the way around or something like that, like a weird GPS thing. It was odd. Fix multiple instances across a variety of menus where the text wouldn't display properly. Okay. Fix multiple issues with health bars not displaying accurately during PvP activities. Nice. Various other m improvements to UI experience. Various localization fixes. And fix an issue where the purveyor of curiosities menu would erroneously display item quality on some items. This didn't affect the item quality was available for the gamble. Okay. Miscellaneous. So how many should be miscellaneous? Quite a bit. Fix an issue where users couldn't create a clan with their language was set to... If their language was set to Russian and Spanish. Okay. Fix an issue where the shop would not properly load if the player dies while in checkout. Oh, shit. <laughs> Fix an issue where multiple cutscenes would not play if the player engaged with them in a party of three or more on Xbox Series S, One, and PlayStation 4. Fix an issue where the randomized look and swap body type actions in the shop didn't function when viewing cosmetics. Okay, cool. Fix an issue where PlayStation 5 screen reader wouldn't function properly. Fix an issue where emotes from the shop would not always function when using the controller. Fix an issue where the player character's eyes would display improperly during the Loris cabin cutscene in the prologue. I don't remember that. I don't think I remember it. I'd like to see that though. Various stability, performance, and visual improvements across all platforms. Fix an issue where players using laptops from certain dedicated cards, graphics cards, would not be able to play the game. Gameplay adjustments. Oh, the first one. Experience rewards. Please. Significantly increases the experience awarded from completing Nightmare Dungeons. All right. Already in on this one. Significantly increase the experience gained from killing monsters in Nightmare Dungeons. Okay. Helltide chests now provide substantially more bonus experience when opened. Nice. Significantly increase the reward experience from completing individual whispers across the board. That's huge. I really like that. I really like that because I do like doing the whispers. Okay, cool. I was kind of hoping that they did something to whispers because if they're going to change the Nightmare Dungeons, Helltide as well, and now whispers, that's great. That's all the end game content just got a boost for experience. Great. Fixed niche awarded from completing the holdout style event that can occur. Is that the thing that we're talking about? Fix an issue where no experience was awarded for completing the holdout style event. Is that it? Is that the mid, the mid in between? The damn wall things? Is it that? Ah, oh, yes! <laughs> we were literally just talking about this today. Man, okay. So, general. The Helltide Roman bosses will now more consistently drop higher quality loot. Great. Players can now teleport to Nightmare Dungeon directly through the map. Yes. Weekly bonus caches from new world bosses no longer have a level requirement for opening. Okay. 
We are currently working on increasing the monster and elite density of endgame content and plan to introduce this change early in season one. All right, then. Okay, not bad, not bad. Balance changes. We're continuing our efforts to make all classes builds feel fun and powerful uh, <clears throat> with another round of balance updates. In particular, we have seen the community feedback stating that basic skills aren't impactful enough in combat. These changes will not change the fundamental relationship between basic skills and core skills, but we do, uh, sorry, we hope that they help smoothing out the level and experience while, it, while we explore additional ways to strengthen them. We are also increasing the power of some skills that people players feel are lagging behind their fears. Please don't be lightning orb, ball lightning. I just had a really good build with ball lightning. Didn't work, so it felt crap. It's going to get an up. It's going to be better. As we look uh, forward to the future updates, we're monitoring other heavily discussed topics such as uh, minion survivability and build uh, build parity. What's this? Anyway, please keep sending us feedback and we'll see you in Sanctuary. Okay. Okay. We're going to check out Barbarian first. Now, I've played Barbarian and Sorcerer properly. We've got level 80s on both at the moment. I played a bit of Druid. Not much Necro, not much Rogue. So, we're going to check out Barbarian. Lunge and Strike. Base damage increased from 30 to 33. Fury generated 9 to 10. Nice. Bash. Fury generated 10 to 11. Enhanced Bash Fortify 10 to 20%. Okay. Frenzy's base damage is 22%. Flay. Bleeding base damage from 36 to 40. Fury generated 9 to 10. Nice. Okay. Enhanced Flay's vulnerability chance from 10 to 15%. That's huge. Base damage increased from 36 to 40 on double swing. Kick. Cooldown reduced from 17 to 13 seconds. Base damage dealt to enemies knocked back into terrain is from 54 to 70. All right. Okay. I like that. Charge. Enhanced charge base damage dealt to enemies knocked back into terrain by 15 to 30%. Okay. You can do like a terrain bash one now. Nicer one. Leap. Mighty Leap slow increased from 50 to 70%. Enhanced Iron Skin's barrier from 10% to 20% of max life. Call of the Ancients. Prime Call of the Ancients bonus attack speed is increased from 10% to 20. Cooldown reduced on a Iron Maelstrom from 60 to 45 seconds. Oh, Christ. Bonus critical strike chance by 30% and damage by 40 this is real good. This is real good as well. There's an Iron Maelstrom build that I had written down that I want to try out. That's pretty big. Bounding Slam. Base damage from 75 to 112. Legendary Aspects. The below includes changes to flat damage. Legendary Aspects. These effect, uh, effects scale with the power. For example, 820 item power, uh, Bull Cathos Earthquake, increased uh, from 17, uh, 1700 to 3400 to 26 to 37. All right, okay. Full Kavos. Earthquake flat damage increased. Okay. From 39.76 to 6.83. Okay. Earthquake flat damage 39.76 to 6.83. Dust Devils flat damage 16.25.22.32. So it's just a lot of increases over Wind Lasher, Devilish, Iron Warrior. They all just get increased. Damage reduction increase from 15 to 25. That's always good. Damage reduction is always nice anyway. All right, okay. Items. Overkill. Damage increase from 16 to 30% to 24 to 38. And Hellhammer. Flat damage increase by uh, from 3.5 to 6.8. Okay, nice. There's some nice changes overall on the Barbarian there. I like that. Druid. Now, I don't play Druid, so I'm not too sure how much these changes are going to affect for me at the moment because I don't play it. But it could sway me. Actually, no, I do play Druid. I've got a hardcore, but he's not very high level. So I don't know how much this is going to sway me, but we'll see. Earth Spike base damage has gone up to 17%. Spirit generated increased to 11. Fierce Earth Spike fortify increased by 8%. Nice. Instead of 4. Wind Shear base damage from 17 to 18. Spirit generated 12 to 30. Okay. Claw. Uh, base damage of Claw goes from 20 to 22. Spirit generated is 10 to 11. From 10 to 11. Wild Claw double attack chance increased to 15%. Fierce Claw base damage increased to 15%. Maul. Base damage increased to 22%. Spirit generated uh, increased to 15 Enhanced uh, Maul Fortify increased by a percent, bringing it up to 3 Lightning Storm. Enhanced Lightning Storm duration increased to 6 seconds. Primal Lightning Storm chance to immobilize increased from 8 to 12. All right, okay. The third base damage, sorry, third attack base damage for Shred is up to 70%. Okay, increase to 70. That's good. Enhanced Shred Healing increases to 2% of max life. Raging Shred's base damage increased from 51 to 
and primal shreds critical strike damage is increased from 20 to 30 percent it's pretty big isn't it wolves cooldown reduced from 14 to 11 seconds ferocious wolf pack lucky hit chance increased from 10 to 40 okay that's that's a big increase as well hurricane base damage increased from 97 percent to 134 nice rabies poison uh damage increased from 53 to 76 okay these seem quite significant changes here as well cataclysm base damage increased from 52 to 64 that's percent lacerate base damage increased from 400 to 460 okay petrify Critical strike damage bonus increased from 25 to 30 percent pummel base damage increased from 140 to 180 passives bestial rampage attack speed bonus from 20 to 25 damage bonus increased from 20 to 30 nature's fury chance to cast a free spell increases to 30 percent lupine ferocity uh damage bonus increased from 60 to 70 percent and then legendary aspect reworks i guess now so room works conduit flat uh flat damage increase from 1 to 1.4 mangled critical uh sorry chance increased from 20 percent to 30 to 30 to 40 percent cooldown decreased this is on seismic shift cooldown decreased to 2.5 to 1.5 seconds to just 2.1 all right okay blurred beast damage increased from 60 to 90 percent to 70 to 100 percent it seems very very good so far it does doesn't it so necromancer these ones i haven't played yet so i'm not too sure on but we are gonna have a quick look at these ones rogue and sorcerer so necromancer let's have a look skills reap base damage increased from 12 to 13 percent acolytes reap cooldown between corpse re uh, reduced from five to four seconds decompose base damage increased from 30 percent to 33 base essence generated per second is increased from seven to eight Corpse's form frequency increases from 2.5 to 2 seconds. Okay. Hemorrhage. Base damage increased from 25 to 27%. Essence generated increases from 8 to 9. Bone splitters. Splinters. Base damage increased to 9%. Essence generated to 7. Okay. Sever. Initial base damage increased from 63 to 66. Enhanced Sever's return base damage increased to 40%. All right. Bloodlance. Bloodlance. Supernatural Bloodlands overpower requirement reduces from eight to six casts. Necro changes are good. The hurricane damage buff is nice. I'm liking this. Bone split is nice to start the game uh, since it's used for essence gen. Oh, that's pretty good then. Yeah. Bone prison. Cooldown reduced from 20 to 18 seconds. Dreadful bone prisons fortify increase from five to eight percent. Iron Maiden. Base damage increased from 10 to 20 percent. Horrid Iron Maiden damage increase is 20 percent. Corpse Tendrils. Blight Corpse Tendrils chance to spawn blood orbs increases from 30 to 35%. Bone Spikes. Base damage increase from 80 to 120%. Raise Skeletons. Uh, skeleton and Golem, sorry. Minions will now always engage targets with a cast curse. All right, okay. Passives. Kalan's Addict. Adi addict. Uh, damage taken during uh, duration requirement reduced from 3 to 2 seconds. Rathma's Vigor, healthy duration requirement reduced from 15 to 12 seconds. Spiked Armor, the fawns increased from 0 0.8, 0 0.16, 0 0.24 to 0 0.1, 2, and 3. Legendary Aspects, Bursting Bone, flat damage increase from 0, uh, 0 0.022 to 0 0.45 to 0 0.6. Okay, uh, sorry, 0 0.06. Flesh Rending, es uh, Essence Gained increased from 10 to 20 to 20 to 40. Okay. And then fast blood ultimate cooldown reduction increased from five uh five to one is it to one to 1.5 there you go that's pretty good changes i suppose i don't know too many of these if i'm being honest when it comes to necro same with the rogue i'm not going to know much about the rogue here as well okay so on to rogue we've got invigorating strikes base damage is increased to 25 percent from 23 blade shift increased damage from 15 to 16 heart seeker uh base damage is 24 primary heart seeker damage increased from 30 to 75 percent forceful arrow base damage increased from 20 to 22 percent barrage 20 to 20 percent to 22 percent increase uh caltraps methodical caltraps chill increased from 20 percent to 25 percent smoke grenades cooldown has been reduced to 13 seconds instead of 15 rain of arrows cooldown reduced from 60 to 55 seconds prime rain of arrows imbuement potency increased from 20 percent to 30 percent volley base damage increased from 70 percent to 105 percent Passives, close quarter combat, damage bonus increased from 20 to 30%. Legendary aspects, we've got escape artist, cooldown decreased from 100 to 45 seconds. Umbros, 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 
Ambrosia. A lucky hit chance to gain a Dark Shroud increases 30 to 50% to 40 to 60. And Eyes in the Dark increased depth, uh, sorry, Death Trap cooldown reduced from 30 to 15% to 20 to 15%. Okay. So far, so good. Now we have Sorcerers. Sorcerer is what I'm playing at the moment. So this is where I find out that Lightning Ball has been aggressively buffed and I have to change back to that. I hope it's not that. Honestly, I really hope it's not that, you know. All right, okay. Spark. Base damage for Spark goes from 8 to 10%. In high Spark damage, enhanced Spark damage goes to 7%. Flickering Spark chance increased to 4%. Frostbolt. Base damage increased to 38%. Firebolt. Base damage increased to 44%. Charge Bolt increased to 30% on base damage. Incinerate. Base damage for Incinerate goes to 54%. Enhanced Incinerate damage goes from 15 to 25. Greater Incinerate Immobilize requirement reduced to 3 seconds. Fireball. Mana cost decreased to 35. Okay. Frozen Orb. Uh, I'm getting dangerously close to uh, Lightning Orb and I don't like it. Or oh, Ball Lightning. Initial base damage. Increase from 32 to 36. Explosion base damage, 29 to 34. And greater frozen orb chance to apply vulnerable increases to 30%. It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice there. Blizzard, base damage increased to 130. <laughs> we don't gain anything from that on my build. We are running a Blizzard one. But it still does a little bit more damage, so I'm happy with that. Ice Blade. Oh, that's huge. That's huge. Chance to apply vulnerable, just increase to 40 we run one of that just to get more vulnerable chance. So that's perfect. That's really good for us. Lightning Spear. Well, for me, Lightning Spear. Summon Lightning Spear maximum damage bonus increased from 100 to 160%. Okay. Crackling Energy. The base damage is 20% now. Freeze and Wake. Base damage increased from 60 to 110. Legendary Aspects. Abundant Energy. Chance to chain to an additional enemy increased from 20 to 30 to 30 to 40%. Singed, singed Extremities. Slow amount increased from 25 to 35 to 40 to 60 percent. Incendiary chance to restore mana increased from 5 to 10 percent to 12 to 17 percent. Snow guards damage reduction increased from 10 percent, 10 to 15 percent to 20 to 25 percent. And concentration mana regen increases from 10 to 20 percent to 20 to 30 percent. Items flame scar flat damage increased to, to, point, uh, to point two to three. Okay, staff of lama sen. Dam damage reduction is um, reduced from 40 to 30 to 35 to 25. Okay. You know one thing that I'm really happy with? There was no change to lightning ball or ball lightning. Because I was really scared that ball lightning was going to get huge upgrades there. And I was scared about that. You know what though? They're huge. They're, honestly, for the most part, the fixes to the, the class and stuff, great. But it's this. Honestly, this is what's going to change the game for me, right? So at the start of this video, you would have seen what we were predicting, I guess, for what we were going to see. And some of it's already been answered just here. In the experience world to nightmare dungeons and all that, I'm, I'm chuffed about that. That's great, isn't it? I like that. I like that. There we go. Right, let's see. So I'll run just a regular one. Doesn't matter which one I run. And we are at currently 9.3 million, right? Let's do this dungeon then. And we'll see how much we get from this whole dungeon. Ooh. Okay, so along with the loot, let's not worry about the loot. We we're at 9.33 million when we started this one. It was a, a tier 35. We're level 82. We're now at 11,744. So that's just over 2 million, right? 2 million, close to 2.5 million we got from that. Is that right? And 168k just for finishing it as well. Around 2.4 million. That's really fucking good. Around 2.4 million extra. It's pretty good, isn't it? 